Good afternoon and welcome to Seniors Count. I am your host, Tula Mall. On our show, we believe that you are the foundation on which Boston was built. So our goal is to connect you to resources, benefits, and information to enhance your life. Thank you for joining us. Today, my guest is Jose Colucci from IDEO Boston. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Oh, we're so glad you could be here. My pleasure, Tula. So why don't you start off by telling or describing to us uh, what is IDEO? Because I think it's something most people have never heard of. Perfectly. IDEO is a design and innovation firm that started more than 30 years ago in, out of Palo Alto, uh, Stanford. And uh, over the years, we multiplied. We have 10 locations in the world, 600 people. And uh, our founder, David Kelly, likes to say that everyone in North America has used a product designed by IDEO. For instance, if people have used a Microsoft mouse or an Apple mouse, they have used a product designed by IDEO. Wow, okay. What is, um, what is IDEO's mission? Like, describe them as, I know something that you guys put out is a publication, mm -hmm. but what else do you guys do on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, we are um, a consulting firm, so mm -hmm. uh, clients approach us to, uh, for the design of products, services, strategies, so we've done a lot of work uh, for for uh, retailers, for consumer goods, for transportation, um, automobiles, so a wide range of wow. different services and products. Uh, and IDEO also has a branch that does uh, social impact work called IDEO.org, and we do uh, work in Africa and India funded by the Rockefeller Foundation and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as well. So we have many different areas in which we, we work. Oh, it must be very interesting. Yeah. yeah, it is. So I know one of the things that you guys have focused on this year is the aging population. Yes. Right? So um, tell me what, uh, what brought you guys to pick that topic or, yeah. Well, a few of us at IDEO are interested in aging because we see the potential of uh, design for aging is a, is a really pressing challenge because the population is aging quickly around the world, not only in North America, but we have a location in China, in Shanghai, and the Chinese population is aging very quickly. Mm -hmm. Uh, the number of, of people over uh, 80 is going to be very high in a, in a few uh, decades. So we have to prepare for that. We have to have uh, services, uh, our policies and our products in place uh, ready for that and actually to address the situation of people who are uh, now uh, know, um, uh, becoming part of that demographics. Okay. I know you brought us some uh, PowerPoint presentation to showcase some of this concepts that you guys yes. are thinking. Yeah. So, um, oh, go ahead. So, it's, it's outside client work. Th oh, yeah. Those are concepts, yeah. not finished, no, uh, well, well uh, detailed concepts that we put out uh, to tell the world things we can do and uh, encourage them to think about uh, new ideas on, on ver various topics. We had, we've had birth and water and, uh, and uh, a number of different topics. And, and this year we decided that aging would be appropriate. So those are our concepts, our internal concepts for aging. So they're just conceptualized, right? Yes. Um, and you draw in members of like all different uh, fields, I'm guessing. So maybe yeah. um, an engineer, if it's something physical, maybe a psychologist. Yeah, you have, you, well, we have in our, in our um, uh, design community uh, and all sorts of specialties from engineering to design to anthropology, psychology, business people. So we invited everybody, everyone mm -hmm. with no dis distinction to contribute ideas. And then we select a few ideas okay. that we thought would be inspiring and intriguing. For, Do you have for any our idea point. how many ideas came like, uh, to the pot? We, we had over 70 ideas wow. and we selected a few. Uh, a lot of good ideas are there waiting for us to use them somewhere else. Was this yeah. worldwide? Uh, this is like a worldwide project? This is project? Ideal, uh, global. Oh, yes. very interesting. All right, so let's talk about some of those 15 that you guys chose to kind of really uh, flesh out a little bit more. Sure. Um, so the first one was over delivery. Yeah. So what is that? So over delivery is the idea that uh, you know, a, a many senior citizens uh, live by themselves mm -hmm. and they feel isolated. Uh, some, there, there are kids may call if they have kids, but uh, on the day to day, they don't feel a lot of, a, they don't experience a lot of a human contact. So over delivery is that idea that you can start a service that not only delivers uh, goods and packages, but uh, help people uh, if they need something. Okay, can you help me assemble this furniture? Can you, uh, you know, help me with something else? I bought a new toaster and don't, I don't know how it works. And also those people can be selected uh, and trained for empathy. 
so that they can uh, you know, have a small conversation with people they, they, they serve and they can tell their families about their psychological well-being. You know, if they are depressed, mm -hmm. maybe there's a warning. So it's uh, over delivery is more than just delivering, it's doing something uh, else that that population needs. That's very interesting and I think that's something that definitely could, there's a lot of value in it. You know, if you're just talking about delivering something, right, so someone gets a package, sometimes for someone who's got arthritic fingers, it's hard to open a package, right? Yeah. So FedEx does a great job of getting you whatever it is you ordered yes. or whatever was sent to you. You got it in your house, hopefully you can carry it in, what do you do with it, right, especially if you're an older adult? Absolutely. What if you order uh, a new uh, uh, cell phone and you don't know how to use it? <laughs> Your delivery guy can help you do that, yeah. figure out the manual. Oh, right? that's very, yeah. oh, I like yeah. that a lot. And then so the part of the conceptually, it would be connected to your family member who would be able to call yes. them and yeah. say, how did you... Yeah. You know, how's my mother doing or how's my grandmother yeah. doing? Exactly. Very so people are trying to do that using technology. Mm -hmm. They install cameras, they yep. have an oven that tells the family if, if grandma made coffee this morning or not. But that is kind of a, uh, it, it, you miss that human connection Absolutely. that the service would provide. Absolutely, very interesting. Um, the next one, or the next two, are kind of similar, story box and book of bequests. Yeah. So can you talk about them? Absolutely. Uh, story box came from our uh, colleagues in China. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and the uh, book of uh, bequests came from Palo Alto, but they are very similar in their concept. The idea is that uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, older members of your family that have a lot of memories and how do you preserve those memories? Mm -hmm. is, there a, is there a good way of doing that? And some people are better than others, right? Some people have uh, written instructions for the family in, in how they do things and, uh, and, and uh, they tell stories to, their, to, to, to the younger members of their families. But there's no structure around it. Mm -hmm. So those two objects, one is very conceptual. The, the, uh, the uh, story box is more tangible because it is a little box. Uh, we're showing it now. Yeah, they were It's a little it. box that has uh, even a screen inside that you can um, uh, record a tape oh, of that okay. person talking to their des descendants. So they say, this uh, you know, uh, gift here I will leave to my granddaughter because it was given to me by my granddaughter when I was little. And that could be an interesting way of communicating with the younger generation. The other concept is a more how do we structure the story so that people, when, um, when they approach the end of their lives, and that's a, an issue also we will address in the future, but uh, when they approach uh, uh, you know, an, an older age, how, how do they uh, have their desires met by the family? You know, what they want to do with their belongings oh, okay. or who they're going to leave it to? So, story box is more of a way to like, if there's something that was passed down in the family, to kind of keep the story with the object, yeah. right? Yeah. So, let's say there's a locket that was, yeah. you know, it was yeah. great grandmother's and it had a story. In this way, the, the person giving it can tell a story that, so the story doesn't get diluted yeah. over time. Absolutely. And then, book of bequest sounds more like more of end of life. Um, uh, thinking about what it is that you want to do, it yes. like, like a will, but not yes. legal, yeah. right? It's it's a more uh, human form of uh, a will. Okay. Uh, will is a very uh, dry legal document, yeah. <laughs> and this and this they one are. is a little less dry. It's more personal. that ha has that uh, personal human touch. Interesting. Interesting. Um, have you has anyone tr in your office maybe tried out like? or spoken to older adults and to see their responses to these things? Have you uh, well, actually, informally tested them? Uh, actually, one of the videos that uh, my colleagues created has actually uh, her grandmother, oh. 92 years old, uh, interacting with the objects. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. Um, all right, let's talk about Goofy Foot. So what is that? Okay, Goofy Foot is, uh, you know, as you can oh, see, is a, is a kind of a tongue-in-cheek idea yep. in design. But uh, what is important here is not the current embodiment, which I think is very inspired in terms of, of associating design and humor, mm -hmm. but uh, also the idea that uh, it's not because you get older that uh, you have to use you know, that standard mm, yeah. elderly uh, you know, attire that you know, we normally associate with uh, you know, uh, orthopedic shoes and mm -hmm. things like that. So this is uh, 
Why can't you have the same objects repurposed? Why can't you have a design language to your objects yeah. that reminds you of when you were young and, and able and, and, and uh, flexible? So that, that is the idea. And the next uh, project, also the changing years, is the same idea. Why do we make all, all the um, apparels and shoes for the elderly? Uh, cream colored and, and uninspired, yep. right? So is there a way to design objects that are inspiring for the elderly? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, is there a way to uh, communicate that, no, oh, you know, we are not just, just here waiting for something to happen. We are an active part of life. Uh -huh. Here's, no, because what we wear, what we, we, uh, the objects we use are a way of communicating our ideas to other people as well. When you guys con conceptualize these things, how deep do you get into it? Can you talk a little well, bit about that? Those are short projects. Yeah. Those okay. designers did that in their spare time. Okay. But uh, if we are working for a client, uh, a typical project may take from 12 to 18 weeks. Okay. So we normally start by interviewing people. Mm. We, we practice what we call human-centered design. So people at the center of, of our focus. So we learn from people by observing them in their uh, places of work, in their homes, how they do things. Okay. And then we collect all that uh, wealth of information. It is not data. We yep. don't collect data. We, we collect insights because insights will inspire us to design better services and better products. Interesting. So but for these projects that, you, that we were talking about, these concepts, really it's just more of a brainstorming that, that you put together with the, a group, I'm guessing. Yeah, well, so, some of the idea, uh, uh, the, it varies. Uh, some of the projects are collective. Some, you know, you have oh, a team okay. that uh, uh, helped Works design on. them. So they did their brainstorms. They, they got together. I certainly did with my group uh, mm -hmm. for one of the, the, the uh, projects. We came up with a number of different ideas and we select a few that we found would be intriguing oh. to, to people. So for Goofy Foot and Changing Gears, was there an actual model, I guess? Is that, that the that right word? That is a CAD model. Okay, so just a yeah. visual, so, nothing physical. It's a visual, it's a computer physical. model. You can't, ah. it looks like the it real looks so object. Good. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like the real it object. Does. They can totally fool you. They can Photoshop that in an environment and ah. you would think your object exists, but okay. it doesn't exist. Oh, that's okay. That's, in, that's good to know. That's yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's move on to... Um, the, uh, the up in years, which this was, yeah. you were part of this project. Yes, I was part of it. And the idea came because I talked to a friend of mine who's a gynecologist, mm -hmm. and she told me that she's been seeing more and more women above 50 with uh, sexually transmitted diseases yeah. in the office. And she, she told me, this is a serious problem. Actually, she said, it's a Viagra. Let's yeah. <laughs> you know, Vi blame Viagra. Let's Vi blame Viagra for that. <laughs> but anyway, I thought, okay, there's an opportunity here to communicate a, a, a public health campaign to seniors in a way that doesn't alienate seniors, mm -hmm. right? It couldn't be too sterile to look like sex ed classes yeah. because that population is beyond that. Yeah. And uh, it couldn't be too, uh, too, uh, too much you know, uh, uh, lax because that wouldn't resonate with the audience as well. So we came up with a, my, my colleague Richard so uh, Hurst. Let's talk about the one that's up there. Oh, just that, real that quick. one. Okay, so that's, uh, that's the idea that uh, uh, people have, you know, no matter how old they are, they have to wear condoms yeah. if they have casual sex. Because that's a population that is no longer in, the, in their uh, reproductive years. Yep. And they think. You know, I don't need to wear a condom anymore, absolutely. right? Absolutely. That's I'm not, not a pregnant. problem. But I'm not going to get pregnant. That's right. And also, let's not forget, they are the. Uh, no, Sex, drugs, and rock and roll generation. That's r oh yes, right? very true. Yeah. So uh, in order to communicate with them, you have to use humor. You have to use a, a light language. Mm -hmm. So that's what we try to achieve in those uh, posters. All right. Then there's this other one. Yeah. This one is about you know uh, time to get your hearing aids checked, but the ah, hearing aids is crossed out, funny. right? So the idea here is that uh, you know. Um, Think about having an HIV test. Yep. Actually, um, those posters have been used in a public health campaign in Florida. Uh -huh. And actually, they try to encourage, uh, encourage uh, uh, senior citizens to uh, get uh, tested for AIDS yep. if they, they have a sex life. Yep. Right? So, which 
So the, the, that one actually was used. The, this one uh, was was conceived as just just as a, as a, as a, an inspiration, but it actually turned out uh, to be useful in that campaign. Yeah, I really liked that one. I really yeah. liked it. All right, this is another one. So you never outgrow a condom. I yeah, well, really... th this is the idea that, no, uh, it's not because you're old, you no longer have to do it. Yep. No, because if you, if you watch movies in Hollywood, only, only teenagers use yeah. condoms in movies, right? <laughs> yeah. Nobody else, right? Everybody uh, you know, has sex. Nobody worries about STDs or, or uh, you know, contraception. But that's, a, that's the wrong message. Mm -hmm. you know, everybody should wear those, and even if you pass your reproductive years. I love this. I mean, I... Yeah. I, I I hope there's more of this. I think this is a really interesting yeah. um, campaign, potentially. Yeah, we hope to been, inspire people to do more. Yeah, it must have been a lot of fun to work on it. Yeah, Because there's it visual, is. there's the, the thoughtfulness. Um, yeah, so very interesting. All right, uh, there's another um, concept that you guys talked about. It's called the gray mirror. Can you yeah. tell us about that? Well, the gray mirror is the idea that um, it's very difficult to talk to young people about things that will benefit them in the future, in mm -hmm. the distant future. Now, talk to a 20-year-old about the importance of saving money for retirement yeah. or using uh, sunscreen yeah, oh. or eating healthy. <laughs> yep. uh, oh, my, yeah, by Impossible. the time I'm 60, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> they don't worry about it until they get closer to it, yep. right? So uh, it's been shown in, in psychology that uh, if you, uh, if you uh, show young people um, photos of themselves mm -hmm. artificially aged, they are more receptive. So we're right to now those we're messages. showing the mirror. So. We're showing that. So the idea for the for the gray mirror is that uh, you have an electronic device that uh, you slide your hands on it. Yep. And your image ages in the Interesting. mirror. Interesting. I think there's an app for that. Just kidding. There, there, there is an there app. There is an app. I is, knew it. That is static. It's called Age Booth. Yes. You age can booth. take your picture yes. and age yourself. Yeah, I love but that. But the idea here is that uh, it is it is a, a live image. Oh, okay. You can see yourself from from many different angles. Yeah. And the technology is uh, is there. We can make it happen. Okay. It just like it, it takes some effort to make it happen. So I faked it. Yeah, I those. like that. So I aged. Uh, this is my daughter, by the oh. way. I took this picture at my basement. <laughs> so um, she's being aged artificially mm. in Photoshop. Oh, very nice. So what do you guys imagine this, the application of this? So in, in schools or because it's got to be a very physical application. Yeah. You have to be in front of the, the mirror. Yeah, in, uh, ma many different uses. For instance, you can use that in, uh, in a, um, public health. Mm -hmm. now, if there's anything that will benefit you in the future, you can show the effect on your image yeah. oh. of that. You can use that for um, financial services. You have, you know, you're selling insurance or you're selling uh, long-term retirement plans. Yeah. You can uh, have a, a young person ex experiment with that so they will empathize with their future selves okay. and they will take actions that will benefit them not now in yeah. the moment, but in the future. It'd be interesting, I mean, I don't even know if it's possible, but like, let's say you, you're trying to convince someone to stop smoking. Like, this is what yeah. you'll look like if you continue smoking, and this is what you'll look like if you don't continue smoking, right? Yes. That is a That'd great be interesting. point. I think, I think if, we, if in the uh, cigarette packages we had, instead of all the, the horrific yes. pictures we have now, it says, this will make you ugly. <laughs> Or yes. you wage you prematurely. Yeah, or you lose, I, I don't know, I think it will be more successful or... because vanity is a powerful incentive for yes, people. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So these are all very amazing concepts. If people wanted to learn more about them or about stuff you guys are talking about, uh, where could they find out more? It's online. You go to Google and you type designs on IDEO, I-D-E-O, mm -hmm. and you find all that material. So interesting. So I know you had mentioned, um, you know, that this year you worked on aging, and in previous years you'd worked on different things. Um, what's your next, I guess, have you guys thought about what you're doing next year? We are thinking, we have a few ideas about what to do next. I don't know exactly what it's going to be. We have not decided yet, but um, it will be something that will inspire people to think differently and to, uh, and to uh, you know, think like a designer, not yeah. only professionals, but you know, everyone can think like a designer. Very nice. What do you think drives uh, creativity in your organization? I mean, it seems that's what, that's the, the bulk of the work is being creative. Yeah. Well, IDEO has published a book about it. Okay. Yeah. 
So, What's the book uh, called? Yeah. Uh, we, it's called Creative Confidence. Oh, okay. Yeah, by, by Tom and David Kelly. So Creative Confidence uh, tries to convey the idea that everyone can be a designer. No matter what your profession is, no matter what you do, you can think like a designer and you become more creative by virtue of, of applying the mental tools that designers have in your profession. Is there any tip you can leave us with about like how just, to, just in your everyday life to think more creatively? Observe children. Okay. Right? They're not afraid of doing something that is not perfect. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's why they draw so well, mm -hmm. because they are not afraid of criticism. They are not self-censoring themselves. Yeah. So if you want to be creative, you have to adopt the same posture. You have to uh, forget uh, no, what people are going to think of this. No, no. Do what you like, have fun doing it, and you become automatically more creative. Very nice. Well, I, I don't know if there's anything else you want to leave us with, maybe about your thoughts on aging or design in the aging field. I mean, everything requires, uh, you know, thought, and I think that a lot of a lot of organizations don't take that into consideration yeah. when they're designing things. So, what are your thoughts on that? I, I think in North America, where we are behind the rest of the world, the rest of the developed world, uh, in terms of thinking about aging, because we are waiting for a crisis to happen before mm. we act We're on it. Right before we respond. So I would uh, encourage people to think about the, uh, the uh, aging population and think about you know, innovative ways of addressing the, the situation. Uh, it is not in favor of only uh, the, the uh, um, aging part of the population. For instance, young people should have more opportunities to work. What if we created a better way of doing, a better way of doing part time for, for uh, the older part of the population? Mm. Right? Yeah. That could be a way of increasing the number of jobs available to young people. What if we had uh, better ways of addressing uh, the, the housing situation for um, oh, yes. elderly people? It's a huge issue. Right? Yep. Yeah. And transportation. Transportation. Let's think about different ways to address that. driverless car will take care of that. That's going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see one of those. Yes. 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 Um, so thank you so much for coming here and talking to us about aging, and I look forward to seeing more of what IDEO comes up with conceptually or uh, in, real, in real life, I guess. Um, so thank you again for coming, and you'll have to come back when you have some other things to share with us. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Of course. My pleasure. Uh, thank you for watching Seniors Count, brought to you by Mayor Martin J. Walsh and our Commissioner Emily Shea. To contact us, please call 617-635-4366 or the Mayor's 24-hour hotline at 617-635-4500. You can also email us at elderly at boston.gov or you can find us on Facebook. Have a great day. I see skies of blue and clouds of white bright blessed days dark sacred nights and I think to myself what a wonderful world I think to myself